Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to EcoBoost. Good to see you. My name is Kate Arnell. If you haven't subscribed already, then this is my channel. Check it out. If you like what you see, then commit and hit that red subscribe button. Today I thought I'd share with you things I quit buying. Ooh, sounds so dramatic. <laughs> Wait until you hear the list. It's gonna be a bit of a letdown. I definitely wouldn't call myself a minimalist. Uh, <laughs> just looking around my room at the moment. I don't know how tidy you have to be to call yourself a minimalist but I have an exceptional talent for spreading the items that we do own everywhere. But I would definitely say we own a lot less than we used to and I've stopped bringing so much stuff into our house. So I thought I'd share with you a list of things I don't feel the need for anymore. Let's do this. Fast slash cheap fashion. Um, I'm not interested in throwaway fashion. I try and choose items that I know I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of and ones that also align with my values. So I like to choose ethical, sustainable brands that use things like organic cotton and have really considered the whole process behind that garment or behind their collection. Or I like to try and shop secondhand and if I do, I definitely look for natural materials. And again, items that I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of. I've also severely cut down on the amount of items that I buy throughout the year. So I used to shop probably every weekend because that's what we did back then. Um, it was something to do with either your friends, your family, or even just on my own. It was a way of just passing the time and I didn't really kind of know any different. Whereas now I've had my eyes opened and buying something from the high street where I don't really know what practices have gone on behind the brand or the garment just doesn't really sit that well with me. I also don't feel the need to have loads of clothes, guys. And I've definitely started to understand what I really enjoy wearing and what actually maybe isn't kind of my verb. So yeah, I've quit fast, cheap fashion. I spent ages swapping out my makeup bag with cleaner, non-toxic versions. Granted, some of them are still in plastic packaging, and this is something that I kind of struggle with a little bit, but at the moment, I'm settling on wearing a lot less makeup. Generally, day to day, I hardly wear any, if, if any, probably not any actually. Um, if I'm on camera, then I like to put a little bit on. It's not perfect by any means, and it's definitely a step in the right direction, but I feel like I'm at a happy balance of, I found products that work really well for me and that I'm happy about the ingredients. Packaging isn't perfect, it is recyclable, but as we all know, plastic is kind of downcycled, not really recycled. If you're at all interested in which makeup products I use um, or which brands I've chosen, then I'll link the video in the cards. Toxic chemical cleaning products. We've kind of pared it down to things like vinegar, baking soda, and what else? A little bit of Ecova washing up liquid kind of thing. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not really big into cleaning and we do have a cleaner who brings her own lemon and uses uh, baking soda, vinegar, essential oils, that sort of jazz. We used to have different products by very well-known brands for different like, parts of the home, so things like kitchen top cleaner and bathroom shower cleaner and oven cleaner, etc. You get the idea. And I think that's something that most people kind of grew up with. So I've really simplified the cleaning products and they're far more versatile, which is great. And as a result, I definitely feel like I'm a lot healthier and my sense of smell has improved dramatically. So for us, it's definitely worked. Bottled water. Um, I've never really bought bottled water in place of tap water at home. That just seems a little bit ludicrous, always has seemed a bit weird. But I did used to buy the smaller bottles of water if I was out and about, because I'd never really think to take my own water bottle with me. Um, it's something that I kind of do automatically now, I don't even think about it. It's like when I leave the house, I'm like, phone, wallet, keys, water bottle, coffee cup, go. This, or one of the other ones that we've got, kind of goes everywhere with me. And I feel a little bit bare, should I say vulnerable maybe, if I don't have uh, my reusable water bottle out with me if I do leave the house, which happens rarely because it's so flipping cold outside right now. Tin foil. I mean, we're so used to using it and then when you take something like tin foil away, I don't even know where I would use it now because I found an alternative for any situation where I might use tin foil. 
So for example, if I want to cover something in the oven, I'll just put the lid on. Or if I want to store something in the fridge, I'll put it in a bowl with a plate on top or in a reusable container. Or if I feel like I need to wrap something up, I can use either a napkin or the waxed organic cotton um, sheets by Abigo or there are other companies out there as well but that's the only one I can think of and that's the only one I've used so I haven't really felt the need to buy any tin foil it's definitely not been missed at all it's funny when you stop buying something like that you kind of think why on earth did I buy it beforehand so yeah cling film is something I really not missed at all in fact even when I used to use it it kind of creeped me out a little bit about how like clingy it is so clingy and obviously you can't recycle it um, and it's just just a horrible material and there are so many kind of alternatives out there again like I said with the tin foil you can kind of use all of those alternatives in place of cling film as well saran wrap whatever you want to call it it's just not needed Tampons and sanitary towels. Uh, if you have watched any of my videos before, you'll probably know how much I flipping love my menstrual cup. I use one by a brand called Moon Cup, but there are lots of different ones out there and so many kind of different styles and colors to suit your vibe. So you can totally make it a real like personal representation of who you are. Tea bags are something I don't really buy anymore either. I basically switched to loose leaf tea. And yes, being a Brit, I drink a lot of tea. I've since read that tea bags, not all of them, but the majority of them, contain a little bit of plastic. So you think it's made of paper and that it's compostable, but actually the bag will contain a little bit of plastic, um, which kind of holds it together. But I'm not really down with the idea of dipping a tea bag into boiling hot water um, and that plastic coming into contact with that boiling hot water doesn't sit quite right with me. So I now make tea using loose leaf tea, which I buy from various spots in London. I recently did a blog post about where to buy bulk items in London. Deodorant is something I stopped buying, but it's okay. I'm still happy to raise my arms. There's no crazy smells coming out. I've checked with a lot of people, a lot of people who would tell me the truth. So instead of deodorant, I use bicarbonate of soda and I usually wait about 10 minutes after I've had a shower and then just pat it on. And it works really well at keeping away any smell throughout the day and sometimes even into the next day. It's pretty effective. Now I know bicarbonate of soda doesn't suit everyone and some people find it a bit of an irritant so there are alternatives out there um, I'm not going to go into it too much now but basically you gotta do what works for your body so for me I found that bicarbonate soda works fine um, and just keeps me going it doesn't stop the actual perspiration shall we say but my body's definitely calmed down since um, moving from normal commercial deodorants to using something way more natural so yeah i don't buy deodorant anymore but i still have friends hugs fabric softener i don't use it anymore instead i will put in a little bit of distilled white vinegar and a few drops of an essential oil um sometimes i don't even bother with that also i quite like steeping citrus peels in vinegar um, and using that as a fabric softener and it, for us it works pretty well. I've been very impressed with the results. And our clothes don't end up smelling of vinegar, which is quite crucial. Magazines. One of the first things I did when I started going zero waste was cancel my four magazine subscriptions. I had Elle, Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, and this is Tatler. So those came every month wrapped in plastic and because they all arrived around the same time I actually didn't feel like I had enough time to sit there and thoroughly read them and really enjoy them and then they'd stack up in a pile in my bedroom and then it was a real faff to sit there and go through and decide which ones to keep and had I finished reading this one and obviously I've saved money because I'm not really buying magazines anymore. Antibacterial soap because Soap is soap and whether it says antibacterial on it or not, it all kills the majority of bacteria. The term antibacterial is kind of a marketing ploy and I watched a show, I can't remember what the show was called, but they proved how just a regular bar of soap cleans just as well as a soap labelled as antibacterial. So I just use regular unpackaged bars.
hula bags. Uh, this is kind of a random one, I guess, because we got a bagless hoover, basically. We no longer have to use hoover bags. Um, I mean, the freedom we feel. DVDs and CDs, all right. We haven't bought a CD or a DVD in ages, actually. In fact, we don't even have a CD player in our house. Um, so I'd have to listen to it probably through my laptop if I wanted to, and we all know how nice and tinny that would sound. So generally, if there's something that we want to watch or some music that we want to listen to, we'll either download it digitally or watch it via a subscription service. I still have a couple of DVDs, for example, I still have my Sabrina the Teenage Witch DVD. I've got the collection of Poirot, the Belgian detective. So I still kept hold of a very small limited collection, but I wouldn't buy them again in the future. Uh, there's a really loud uh, bird outside and it sounds like it's using Morse code. Dot, 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 dash, dot, dash, dot, what? Very cryptic. Another random one, sellotape sticky tape, scotch tape, plastic tape basically. I've just replaced it with brown sticky tape. It works just as well and I haven't missed sellotape. There you go, that's just a snapshot of some of the things that I no longer feel the need to buy and am surviving without. You could say thriving without. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to hit the thumbs up and if you haven't already, I'd love it if you would subscribe. I will see you in the next one, all right. Waving bye bye. That's right. No deodorant. But that arm is up there. Wafting. That door just opened on its own. That was a bit creepy. And now it's closing on its own. Wow. That was the most polite ghost ever. Just shut the door behind itself. Great.